This morning we are in Hamilton and we are at a location called the Canadian Academy of Osteopathy. What is it? We're going to tell you a little bit more about it. We have here Rob Johnston. He is the principal and he's going to tell us about the principles of osteopathy coming up and how it could heal you and your body. We'll be right back. Seven eighteen on Morning Live. Time to head out to our Lori DeAngelis this morning. Hey, Lori. We're going to learn something called osteopathy. So if you don't know what that is, we have here Rob Johnston. He is uh, the principal here at the Canadian Academy of Osteopathy. So first of all, we hear this word now floating yes. around more and more. Uh, what is osteopathy? What does it do for you? It can do a whole lot of great things for people. Really, ultimately, osteopathy is about structural health. And of course, that what does was, that mean? What does that well? Chiropractors made that very, very much a household phrase many years ago. But osteopathy is about structural alignment of the body so that we get nerves, artery, veins, and lymphatics working correctly so that we can self heal and self regulate. So it has the capacity to improve overall health regardless of the medical condition that you're presenting with. So we don't treat medical conditions, but we improve your overall health, your constitution, and your vitality by changing this idea, this understanding of nerve, artery, vein, and lymphatic that can be irritated by a dysfunctional unit of the structure. Okay, so let's cut it down to layman terms. Right. I have a knee problem. What can you do for me? Well, first of all, I'm not going to just look at your knee. It could be a knee problem. It could be a pelvic problem. It could be the way you carry your head. It could be the way you sit in your car. So we're going to look at all of you, and all of that's going to be taken into the to the under or taken into consideration when we're looking at your knee dysfunction. So are you using the body as a messenger to you to know what to treat? No, we're, we're using really hard and fast science, anatomy and physiology, pathophysiology. We study all of these things at a very high level. We're using um, all of the same concepts and principles that medical doctors might use, but we're just looking at the body from a different perspective. That's all that we're really doing. Who is it for? It's for anybody that really it's for, it's for anybody that needs some sort of change in their structural health, which is just about everyone. None of us are really functioning at our optimal capacity any longer. And I think with osteopathic care, people get much better. So this morning, what we're going to do is that we're going to explain to the viewers what exactly it is sure. and what it can do for you. Yes. And uh, also talk about the program here, because you do have a program uh, for full time or for people who are also in another industry That's and right. are thinking about switching industries. Absolutely. Yes, we're going to uh, have a good look at that this morning. We're going to show you more right here at the Canadian Academy of Osteopathy, making health better for you. We'll be right back. This jam is amplified, so just glide, glide, and let your backbone slide. slide. Well, if you're wondering about osteopathy, do you know that you can come down here for a free session and get treated by students? Now, for example, uh, this person is getting treated for their cervical. Um, this area is the rib cage. And then that student is getting treated and treating someone for their pelvis. Now, right here at the Canadian uh, Academy of Osteopathy, Rob, he's going to tell us more about it. Lynn is going to tell us her story coming up right after the break. Please stay with us. We'll be right back. Do you know right here at the Canadian uh, Academy of Osteopathy, today they've treated 10,000 people out there in the community. You can come here and get treated for free. Um, we have here Lynn. Lynn is interesting. Well, everyone is interesting, but Lynn, you come from a medical ba background. Mm -hmm. You're a nurse, and you came here to osteopathy. Yes, I did. Okay, tell us about why you came here. Uh, I was trying other treatments uh, for chronic problems in my lower back and in my legs and they weren't working. So when it came to, to the clinic, I find that um, it works really, really well. It brings circulation to the lower part of my back and my legs, and then I don't have so much pain. So you're going to demonstrate, this is just a little demonstration yes. of uh, how you would treat a case like Lynn's. Great. 
Well, the first thing I noticed as soon as I started to palpate Lynn is that her shoulders are internally rotated and she's got a flexion lesion in her back. So she's putting a lot of strain on her pelvis anyhow. So so you don't go straight to the pelvis. No. You go to the other parts yeah, of the body. Yeah, we have to look at the entire structure. It's all united, you know. I've never seen a patient come in with her just her pelvis. It's typically connected to the rest of their body. So we want to look at everything always. So immediately you start to see changes in the upper girdle, which will affect the pelvis. They work together, certainly in the walking cycle. So if I could get you lying on your side facing me, please, Lynn. How long is usually a session if someone were to come here? It, it really depends on, on the patient. Um, what I really like to think uh, is very unique about osteopathy. There is really nothing that is protocoled. We're going to really establish a, a very specified treatment for each and individual patient every time we see them. So typically a treatment lasts 20 to 30 minutes, once a week, sometimes more. Um, but it does take time. We're trying to get their body to do the work. We're not trying to impose treatment. We're trying to get their body to kick in and uh, actually start to heal. So what's her body doing right now? What is the body telling you? I'm just assessing for movement in the pelvis, generally speaking, trying to make sure that these spinal joints and the soft tissues around them and the ligaments are doing what they need to do. As I cut back through, I'm taking her sacrum and I'm moving her sacrum posterior. So these are all the small joints that actually have a lot to do with the nervous system and the vascular system. Right and now, it's, not it's assessment. Invasive. It's not invasive, and I'm uh, certainly with the work that we teach here at the CAO, the Canadian Academy of Osteopathy. We're not cracking the spine or trying to force treatment on on the patient. We're working with them. That's vital. We're going to show you more and tell you more about osteopathy and how you can come down here or how you can be an osteopath right here at the Canadian Academy of Osteopathy as we go to you, Brian. Now, right here at the Canadian Academy of Osteopathy, they treated 10,000 people for free. Now, if you want to come down here to the Academy, part of the program is for students like Samantha here. She has to come down here and work on patients. Now, you have to understand that when you come down here, both the student is always supervised and there's always a camera, so both patient and student feel safe. Please stay with us. We're going to tell you more about the Canadian Academy of Osteopathy. We'll be right back. Well, we're going to continue right here at the Academy, Brian, and we're going to actually see Eden who is treating Gord's frozen shoulder. Now, uh, part of the program, Rob, is that yes. students are, uh, are here, uh, part of the clinical program. The student, uh, another student is charting, right. like Ruth, and we have a supervisor yes. always watching so that both patient and student feel safe. That's absolutely correct. Brandon's been with our program for more than 10 years now, so he's our head clinical supervisor. So here's, he, he's, he's here very often making sure that everything comes off correctly. S patients are well taken care of and the students are learning. That's the most important thing. So when people come down here, and let's say Gord, he is treating now a frozen... A frozen sh shoulder, yep. So we're just gently using some articulation to stretch some of the soft tissues very carefully. We're not necessarily working on the frozen shoulder as such, but we're looking for reasons why it might be in, in trouble. So you can see that the student is working through the scapula thoracic tissues, coming down through the medial aspect of the, of the scapula, and dealing with all of the other satellite problems that you would have with a frozen shoulder. The man can't move his arm very well, but his entire upper upper limb and shoulder girdle will be bothering him. All of that's taken into consideration. So let's say we open up Gord, and this is Gord's skeleton. Right. Okay. What you were explaining to me during commercial break is that you don't just look at the shoulder. That's right. If you see all this, this blue and this red, these are all where the muscles join the spine. Now, osteopathically, I'm going to want to know where that bone is three-dimensionally in space. I want to know what's what's influencing it from the front and the back and both sides, from the top and the bottom. So this is all within the wheelhouse of an osteopath. You need to understand this three-dimensionally and you need to look at it very much like an engineer would look at a machine. So you need to, th to really think like an engineer and work like a mechanic. Okay, so not just go to the problem, Absolutely. but analyze it right. as well. It might hurt here, but it might have nothing to do with that part of your body. We're going to tell you more about the Canadian Academy of Osteopathy. Please stay with us. We'll be right back.
We're going to continue here at the Canadian Academy of Osteopathy. We are at the clinic right now. Now, usually when you think about it earlier, we're thinking, uh, oh, if you have a shoulder pain or a back pain, but it's also for someone who has arthritis. We're going to tell you more on how osteopathy could help you help improve your health. Or if you want to be an osteopath, we're going to tell you more right here. Rob Johnson, he is the principal. Please stay with us. We'll be right back. So it doesn't just treat just certain parts of your body, but it could also treat something like arthritis. So we have here Rob Johnston, so uh, who is the principal here at the Canadian uh, Academy of Osteopathy. So tell us more about how could it treat something like that? Yeah, very often times people think that osteopathy is about a sore muscle or a sore back as you yes. alluded, alluded to earlier. Osteopathy can do much more than that. Depending on the type of arthritis the patient has and where it's located, we're always working on the same premise that we're trying to improve the overall circulation, tissue health of the patient. So if we can decrease the overall inflammation pattern, people can oftentimes feel much better without the use of their medication. Not to say that the medication won't be useful. You're saying it complements. Absolutely. We can reduce the amount of medication needed in lots of these types of medical conditions, which I think is very important for a lot of patients. So essentially what Samantha is doing is over all, her entire body or just specifically, you know, every time she comes here will be a different area? It's a great question. First of all, what we want to recognize as osteopaths, we want to know why the patient ended up with arthritis. And then we want to start thinking from there forward or backward. So why did the patient get an arthritic condition? Was there something wrong with their structural health that predisposed those tissues or those bones to an inflammatory response? So that's what's going to guide the way she treats the patient, not just simply dealing with the arthritis. The arthritis is, is really the end result of something else that's gone wrong. Uh, and I was speaking to you, Brenda, earlier, and it really has changed... Um, your life because before you were a very very active person and then you discovered you had sorry yeah sorry so let's just say how it improved your life it is improved my life considerably because when I first started coming here I was cane dependent and crippled over and now um, I walk properly standing up straight and I am without cane now see and that's huge a cane and now without a cane? Yeah, I think this is um, a part of the health care pie that probably needs to be further explored by all those people involved. There's a lots of folks that really need this help. Think of her quality of life, that life has changed, her loved ones, her family. Um, things are improving for her, and oftentimes people with chronic illness feel as though they can't go anywhere. Um, you can come down here. Uh, at the clinic right. for free sure. and get treated. But we yes. have to emphasize that with each student that there's also a supervisor as well and cameras. Supervisor all the time. There's somebody charting. There's a supervisor. There's cameras. We have a, a main display in, in our supervisor's office that makes sure that everybody is in a very safe and careful environment. So everything is heavily monitored. We're going to continue to look at osteopathy right here at the clinic. We'll be right back as we go to you, Leslie and Bob. We're going to continue right here at the Canadian Academy of Osteopathy, and we're at the clinic right now. Now, it is for free if you want to come down here and get treated, but understand that no matter what your ailment, someone here can help you. We're going to tell you more about it. Please stay with us. We'll be right back. If you are interested in becoming an osteopath, we're going to tell you more about it right here at the Canadian Academy of Osteopathy, but this is the clinic area. We have here Bill. We're going to tell you about Bill's story. Uh, so Bill, what was your background before you did this? I was a paramedic for 37 years and uh, retired. A paramedic. So how did a paramedic, was a paramedic for 37 years, decide to do this? Uh, I was volunteering quite a bit as a hockey trainer and uh, 
wanted to learn a bit more. I'm a lifelong learner and I uh, was really intrigued when I had an osteopathy treatment and uh, got a lot of resolve from my issues. And not only adults, but children as well. Absolutely. Tell us about uh, your story with your grandson. Um, so my grandson had really severe colic, wasn't sleeping, my daughter wasn't sleeping, and uh, I said, you yeah, know, let's, let's try treatment. And so we brought him into the school, he was treated by the principal, and uh, immediately after 20 minute treatment, he fell asleep for three hours, and then uh, has been resolved since. He's now uh, doing much better. What's really interesting is that you have a medical background, yeah. and you're doing this. Yeah. Uh, it all makes a lot of sense, so we do a, learn a lot of science. Uh, anatomy, physiology is a, in, extremely important in what we do and uh, understanding the way the body functions. We also want, thank you for sharing your story, we also want to introduce you to Kimberly, who was an accountant yes. for 29 years, right. and you decided to do this. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to do something that I found was more fulfilling and struggled for a few years before making the decision to leave my career. And I knew of people who um, sent their kids to an osteopath and had amazing results. And it opened my eyes to this profession. And I did my research and found the school. And it was the best decision I've ever made. You found people from all walks of life. But, they, but it's a four-year program. It is, yes. And, and, they still, and if they had no uh, prerequisite, um, like Kimberly, right. they have to take a... Yes, there are induction courses that you need to take if you don't come as a health care provider, if you don't meet the prerequisite. So these induction courses are um, very difficult. They're, they're very much preparing students for their first, second, third, and fourth year of osteopathic training. So it gets people ready, and it really is a lot to do with the individual that's applying. And you find that a lot of people who are going to this profession um, all have somehow the same underlining theme, to help. Yes, I, I, I have to say that we're helpers. Uh, all of us really want to make a difference and help others. And I think that's the most important thing. I often ask my students on the first day of class, why did you come here? And there's only one acceptable answer. I want to help others. That's the number one thing. We're going to tell you more right here at the Acad Canadian Academy of Osteopathy and how it could help you or how you could learn to help others. Please stay with us. We are here in Hamilton. We'll be right back. Well, we're going to continue right here at the Canadian Academy of Osteopathy. We're at the clinic, and no matter how you look at it, according to Rob Johnston, we could help your health get better. Even athletes like Mike. Please stay with us. We're going to tell you more about it and how you could come here and get treated or learn to be an osteo. Uh, osteo. Please stay with us. We'll be right back. All right, we have one last visit with Lori DeAngelis right now, and it's all about osteopathy this morning. Hey, Lori. Hi, Lori. Yeah, and it's about no matter what walk of life or what your lifestyle, it could help anyone, according to Rob Johnston here, who is the principal. And he's working on one of the Burlington uh, Cougars, who is a hockey play player. We, uh, and tell us what you're working on right now. Right Rob? now, we're just looking at thoracic articulation, generally speaking, as I hold him here. We're looking at a little bit of fascial work, and with a lot of the hockey players, a lot of the elite athletes, their connective tissue is just very, very short, and they don't move very well, and this actually reduces their performance capacity. So I'm trying to make him rotate better to the right without forcing anything, as you see. This is all connective tissue work, and I think this will make him a better overall athlete, perform at a higher level, less injury. And actually, we have here the VP of the uh, Burlington Cougars. And we're going to talk about how osteopathy has helped athletes like Mike. So Mike had a sciatica problem. Right, he did, yeah. And we ran into Rob and his group from the academy about three months ago. And he was having some severe pain in one of his back legs. And it's a, it's a new thing for our club and organization with the Cougars to have this type of treatment. Anyways, here we are three months later. The player has been uh, satisfied and has helped his injury, and he's come back to play pretty good. So that's important for us. We want our elite athletes 
and our top players back in the lineup every night. And Mike's doing uh, fairly well. And what did you do for the community, Mike, in terms of, uh, of, uh, of this group? Tell us about your story, about uh, how you gave back to the, to the community. Oh, well, uh, part of really a big philosophy of the CIO is to do as much as we can for the community as possible. So we're trying to make sure that we're, uh, we're seeing people down here for free. We're 10,000 treatments and working with local uh, athletic communities and sponsoring and helping kids uh, to the best of our ability. So it's about giving back. That's our whole thing. And this athlete, can you tell them a little bit about what happened to you? Uh, I just had sciatic problems with my right leg for a while. And uh, I had treatment all over. I went to physical therapy, chiropractor for a few months, was in a lot of pain. Uh, came here up to Burlington and I saw our team trainer and he thought it'd be a good idea to come see Mr. Johnston here. And uh, ever since then, he worked on me one time and it's uh, improved drastically and it's helped my game out a lot. So it helps people no matter what their lifestyle is. Yes, of course. Yeah, that's our whole thing is to try to, you know, reduce pain and suffering, see people before they become horribly, horribly ill, make sure that we're doing things to prevent injury and accident. And, uh, you know, from children right up to elite level athletes, osteopathy can, can render changes for people. So, again, if you want to come down here and you would like to get treated, you have to book an appointment. It is for free. Or you can come down here and ask if you want to make a career change and help others as well. We are here at the Canadian, Osteop uh, the Canadian Academy of Osteopathy. Thank you so much, everyone, for sharing your stories as we go to you, Brian.